Hey guys, I haven't brought you a video in a while. I figured I'd get you an update. I've been uh, severely lacking in my uploads and uh, I was having some camera problems and I uh, fixed that. I've got a new camera and uh, yeah, I've been working on some knife projects. I figured I'd uh, bring you an update or two. So this is one here I've uh, just recently finished up. Made this for a guy at work. Um, he essentially saw my original and wanted one very similar to it. Um, but he also saw a little neck knife that I made with a finger hoop on it and wanted that incorporated. So um, here it is. This is uh, again very similar to my original. These are G10 handle scales, double black G10 it's called, I guess. Uh, so just both weaves are, are both, uh, all, all the layers are black. Um, as you can see, it has liners that just look gray. You can see I've drilled down into them. Uh, they actually glow in the dark, so it's kind of cool. Um, when it's out in the UV or in the sunlight for a little while, the, uh, the whole handle trim uh, glows blue. When it gets dark, so you do have to charge it up a bit. And I'll uh, I'll shut off the lights here and or get it to, get to a dark area and show you guys that in a minute. But uh, yeah, it turned out pretty decent. He wanted a little more blade to it. It's got about a quarter inch more blade than my original, and different style handle. So I went short on the grips just because trying to get your finger in that loop when it had full thickness G10 and and the liners. On there was just it wasn't comfortable so I uh, figured I'd go raw on the uh, the loop itself this is made out of uh, CPM 154 stainless steel it is 59 Rockwell hardness 3 16 thick it's nice and chunky it's comfortable um, I find that well I'm getting all four fingers on the grip I've got pretty large hands uh, my palm comes down onto the to the ring a little bit here, but I'm not gripping with, or sorry, I don't know if you call it my palm, the, the bottom edge of my, my hand. I don't really grip with that. I grip here normally, and so I actually find that nice and comfortable. doesn't bother my hand at all having it uh, kind of run down onto the ring. Something different. Didn't want it to be like this long with the ring down at the base and a full length handle, so I wanted to kind of incorporate it into the ring. But, uh, so I mean if you were chopping or something, you could keep your finger in the ring and you're not really going to ever have to reset. Uh, if you're working away on something, you know, you're, you're uh, cutting some cordage, you need to just get your knife out of the way, do some tying, and you can just slap it back up in your hand and continue on working. It's handy. Um, it's not really a tactical thing by any means. I mean, yes, you could hold it like this in a, in a reverse grip if you needed to, but this isn't really a tactical blade. This is a woods blade. Just, uh, yeah, not too bad. Came out pretty good. Um, put an edge on it. It's all right. Did the uh, Kydex sheath for it. I made this one a little different than mine. On my original, I molded a plate on the back for the tech lock, and I can rotate the tech lock uh, by the two screws that are molded, molded on this plate. If I uh, if I want to do this scout carry, I pretty much need to mold a new plate for this side, so I can because I'm right-handed. Um, so that was kind of a an afterthought, I guess, something I should have done. Well, I corrected that on this one. Uh, essentially, instead of molding the back plate, I used some rubber grommets or rubber standoffs in between the uh, Chicago screws. So I was able to keep the plate flat so that if he wants to carry this anyway, you know, it's fully ambidextrous, uh, carry scout, scout carry, you know, hip carry, whatever you want to do, this plate is transferable front to back and the tech lock of course you can rotate so uh, yeah pretty versatile sheath I guess 
works well, retains really nicely. The only rattle you're going to hear is the tech lock itself. No way it's ever going to come out of there. And you do have to push to get it to come out. But again, it uh, retains really nicely in there. Not too bad. This is uh, my third knife. My second one um, got delivered. I didn't get a chance to get a video on it. I know uh, the guy that was... Uh, Waiting for it was really anxious, and I just didn't uh, I didn't want to make him wait any longer, so I handed it over without getting a video done on it. But there are some pictures on my YouTube channel and on my website, or sorry, on my Facebook page, uh, Northeastern Blades, and my website. Um, I might steal that back from him sometime just to do a video on where he's local, but I'd like to get some kind of uh, etching machine or etching setup. I know people use just an invert or an adapter. Or a, DC adapter or whatever for uh, for putting a, some kind of logo on the blade but one step at a time I guess uh, just kinda working into this getting uh, getting some practice um, these liners are, are they crinite or something like that um, it's kinda cool stuff it's a little brittle I had some crack on me while I was working with it. Um, these pieces are good, and once I get them sandwiched in underneath the G10 between the steel, obviously they're they're going to be fine. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's not the easiest material to work with. Cutting it, of course, uh, you got to go slow or it melts back together. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So like I said, I'll I'll get you guys uh, in a dark room here and and show you the handle scales in just a moment. Just or the uh, the liners. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. It's, uh, well, let me give you some measurements real quick here first, just to... Overall length on this knife, from tip to the end of the lanyard loop, or finger loop, is about nine and a half inches. So we've got, uh, right on five inches of blade. So, pretty decent. I think it'll be a good woods knife, multi-purpose. Uh, do plenty with it. It's got lots of uh, lots of cutting area, and if you needed to do some batoning with it or something like that, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, it's not crazy heavy to be uh, chopping with, but you could, you know, it's gonna it's gonna stand up to that. So this was uh, heat treated in an even heat kiln. Like I said, too, about 59 Rockwell. So. Pretty happy with the heat treat so far. Uh, same process was done with mine, and uh, I've been using it nice and heavily, and it just continues to keep its edge. Um, I strop it pretty much after every use, just uh, just out of habit. But uh, yeah, should be a, a good solid knife for uh, for a lot of years to come. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get this in a dark room for you. Um, let you see what the handle scales are like. Um, but short of that. Go ahead and leave me any comments you have. Uh, I am still new to this knife making thing, so uh, there's bound to be some criticisms or uh, constructive criticisms, hopefully. Um, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I've got more knives coming. Uh, I've got another one I'm just finishing up right now that I should have a video up on in a couple days. A little neck knife. Um, plus some more around this size. One a little bigger. It's uh, on its way to Texas here soon. And... Uh, yeah. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like, have a great day. Alright guys, there's the liners. They glow pretty bright. They're actually brighter to the eye than this camera is showing. But, uh, be handy. You never know. You're out trucking through the woods all uh, all afternoon. It starts to get dark, and uh, you're tired. You drop your knife. This might give you a chance to find it better than uh, than not having it glow. You know, dark handles and everything on it could be hard to find. So yeah. Thanks for watching.